so You're listening to a Mamma Mia podcast. Mamma Mia acknowledges the traditional owners of land and waters that this podcast is recorded on. Hey Jess, you know how the other week you were talking about like prizes or gifts for lazy girls to compensate? I believe that we refer to it as free shit. Yeah, free <laughs> yeah, shit yeah, for yeah, lazy yeah. girls. Yeah, yeah, because lazy girls pay a tax. Yeah, we are the patron saints of lazy girls, mm-hmm. and we want to be of service. Yes, and Christmas is a time that can be really stressful mm. for lazy girls. So we thought it's Christmas. Lazy girls love Christmas. Yeah, and we're going to do the laziest Christmas giveaway ever because there's lots of giveaways around. But it's like, oh, 25 words, fill out this form, call a nut. Absolutely not. Like, you don't have to enter. <laughs> what you have to do is be a Mamma Mia subscriber, mm. right? Which you do once is, let's call it a set and forget. You become a subscriber, you're in the running. You only ever have to do one single thing. Yeah, and you might be saying, I'm already a subscriber. How do I, how do well, I, not, you, you don't. don't have to do anything. Claire, remember when you subscribed to Kim Kardashian's <laughs> website indefinitely? It was years. It was years. Took hundreds of dollars and you didn't win anything. Kimoji. Kimoji. And I reckon you are paying 30 a month. I think she just let that go. Like she wasn't even invested <laughs> in it and I just had this recurring subscription. You, you were donating to Kim Kardashian monthly. I was. And what this is, five seventy five, and it's not just you're not giveaways, oh, we can tell you, you get subscriber episodes, you get articles, you get so much value. Then there's this element. Then there's the giveaway element. Your chances of winning, I'm no statistician, but they're there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so, Claire, we've got $1,000 vouch for the iconic. Yeah. And the great thing about that is next day delivery. I mean, next day delivery. No click and collect. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's at the post office. No, it's at your house. It's, it's just on your at, doorstep. It's just at your house. And with that, it's like if you wanted to be selfless lazy girl, you could mm. buy all your Christmas presents. Yeah, yeah. Or you could be completely selfish, lazy girl, and go thousand dollars for yourself. me. Yeah, we exactly for the full list of upcoming giveaways and to get your name in the draw for everyone in one go. Oh, I reckon it'd take you twenty five seconds. Yeah, follow the link in the show notes. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to Cancel, the podcast that looks at silly celebrity crimes and assigns charges and sentences to them so we can all move on with our lives. I'm Claire Stevens, and I'm joined by Jesse Stevens. And Jesse, do you have a lazy girl story for us today? I have my favourite lazy girl story ever. Oh my gosh, that's a high bar. I know, but go on. Came via email. The subject line is lazy girl. Mm-hmm. And then I open the email. Blank. <laughs> I, okay. They didn't write anything. Okay. I'm really into that. They didn't even write lazy girl story in the subject line. No. They said lazy girl. They had an idea. They went, this will be great. This will be great. And then they went, I can't be bothered. And then I don't know if they accidentally sent it, <laughs> but to get a lazy girl with, with a subject line and no body. Yeah. Lazy girl. She's a lazy girl. Is the most lazy girl mood I've ever seen. I absolutely love that. We should Respect do that it. more. Blank I emails, know. blank texts. Yeah. Because like I replied. <laughs> I did. And blank um, phone calls. Like I should just call you and be like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're like, do you have something to say? And I'm like. Mm-mm. 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 Bye. <laughs> Bye now. I'm really into that. I really, really liked it. It says everything about being a lazy girl. Yeah. I wonder if you can do that with podcast reviews. Like just blank. I think you can. Or you, I'm sure you can do like a dot. Yeah, but it makes people look disengaged. <laughs> But it's also like it works for our audience. It works for our audience because they know, yeah. And because the barrier to writing a podcast review is writing a podcast review. Is energy. Review. Yeah. 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 And then sometimes you go to do it and like you give it five stars or whatever and I'm like, does it want you to log in or something? Mm. Oh, I don't know. You can do five stars and then it's like leave a review and it's like I've given you five stars. Mm. Shut up. Stop asking me for things. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Just leave a full stop. Yeah, like, great, great. It's great. great. On today's episode... We are talking about Matt Rife. Ooh, how could he say something like that? He's body shaming me. Cancel Matt Rife. Bitch, you can't cancel me. I'm not your gym membership. Get the fuck off my feet there. Matthew Stephen Rife. 
I knew Stephen oh, would be in there. He's an American. Got the face of a Stephen. Uh, yeah, it's just, it wasn't. And sorry, a Stephen with a PH, I'm imagining? No, Stephen with a V. <gasps> mm. Interesting, because we are Stephen's with a PH. Yeah. Interesting. He is an American comedian and actor. He's best known for his self produced comedy specials. Mm-hmm. I just think that's interesting that he self produced. I've seen his early ones. Clips on TikTok, and some of them are funny. Yeah, we'll get to that. And he's recently gone viral on TikTok and other platforms for a few embarrassing things that we'll get to. As an actor, he is known for his roles on comedy series Brooklyn Nine-Nine and the sitcom television series Fresh Off the Boat. Jesse Rife is also a paranormal investigator Wait, what? featured on the YouTube channel Overnight. Welcome to, welcome back to the Overnight channel. Yeah. Matt is finally back with us. It's been a long time, my it's, friend. It's been long enough. It's, it's been a special occasion. Mm-hmm. This is the first time in two and a half years we're back at the Conjuring. Wow. This is yeah. insane. He goes to like haunted houses and stuff. What? Yeah. I went to like actually look at them and include it and then I went, nah, I've said it. <laughs> I've said it. <laughs> it stands. I was away recently with Luca, my partner, mm. and we were watching like a free-to-air thing and there was a Ghost Hunters channel. Oh, wow. It was just around the clock, 24 hours, and every time you open it, you go, bullshit, you watch every minute. Mm. And they have all their equipment. Yeah. They yeah. have the equipment that goes, nee, 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 nee. I'm never convinced by those shows, though. Really? I think they're so convincing. <laughs> Is that <laughs> a joke? Yes. Okay. Because it's like if you have that much equipment and that much. And like, it's still ki- unclear. And, and still it's like if a ghost is going to talk. <laughs> Why doesn't it say, I'm here because I'm angry and because I was murdered by my wife? Why does the ghost say, I'm picking up an energy? Well, what's it saying? <laughs> what's it saying? You need your technology to be better. We're sending people to space. You're telling me you can't turn the mic up so the ghost can really tell you what it says? And it made me a bit sad because I'm really into ghosts at the moment. Yeah. We're officially on a tangent. So I read this theory recently. You know UFOs? The only people who have enough time to look into UFOs are white men. Yeah, absolutely. Because everyone else is carrying a mental load. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. Same with ghosts. <laughs> think Same about with it. Matt Rife. Women yeah. will think about it. Mm. Don't get me wrong. Women love it. Mm. Go and watch Ghost Hunters for 24 hours. I'll tell you who's on that. Actually. And it is white men being like, oh, <laughs> I have a free two years. <laughs> Let me try this. and find a ghost. That's actually so true. If you speak to a woman who has a ghost story, she'll be like, I was in my room <laughs> and there was an apparition and it spoke to me. And it rattled my bed and it punched me in the face <laughs> and I went, I'll go back to sleep. Yeah. I've got to be up in the morning. <laughs> Whereas a man is like, I went to a haunted house and I heard a ghost whisper. And then so what I did was I ordered an exorcism and it's like, <laughs> why were you not at work? <laughs> I know. It's actually very true. Tangent. Jesse, another fun fact about Matt Rife. He briefly dated Kate Beckinsale. Care enormously. Care enormously. Wait a minute. This is ringing bells. Neurons, neurons, <laughs> neurons. Kate Beckinsale is older than him. Yeah. That was a headline. <laughs> yes, yes. It's just interesting is all. <laughs> Incredibly interesting. I must see I images. Have, I must see I don't images. have anything further to say about it. No, because just... Kate Beckinsale, oh, are you going, well, there are a lot of Kates. Which one? Pearl Harbor. Yeah, that <laughs> one with the skinny face. Kate Beckinsale, Matt Rife. Mm. Okay. I think they were together for like a couple of years. Oh, this. I knew this. My structure for today is as follows. Bad jokes. Response to backlash. Did he have his jaw done? <laughs> embarrassing podcast interview, uncomfortable Zendaya moment, and being too hot for comedy. Mm. Jesse, bad jokes. The reason Matt Rife is in the zeitgeist for a lot of us lately is one particular joke from his Netflix stand-up special, Natural Selection. In November of this year, the special dropped. Have you watched the whole special? I tried. <laughs> I put it on the television and I went, I'll watch it. And I went, this is the single worst thing. I've, I, Why I, was it bad? Because I meant to watch it and then I just didn't. It's not funny. It's what, absolute, say, a single funny moment. I, I can't stress the extent to which I didn't even giggle. It's really, really bad. It's like if a year 10 guy thought he was cool and did mm. stand up. Remember when you and I went to a stand up, oh, yeah. a local stand up night? <laughs> Funniest night of my whole life. 
Today, I've never had so much fun. It was so bad. Because every now and then, one really unassuming person <laughs> is really funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're yeah, like, yeah. you're the funniest person I've ever seen. Yeah. And it's really inappropriate. It's yeah. like, oh, you've not learnt the boundaries, but that's really funny. And the thing you forget about stand-up comedy is that it's often people trying to be charismatic. Mm. So he mm. is on stage trying to be hot. And have a persona. And trying to be yeah. cool. And he's like, yeah, like when you learn to like masturbate when you're like a kid. And I'm like, ew. Shut I, up. I just, it's just, he's trying to be like some a cool character. hot guy. Yeah. But the very first joke of his stand up special is he's talking about being in a Baltimore restaurant with a friend. And they notice that their female waitress had a black eye. They wonder why the restaurant wouldn't have her work solely in the kitchen so that the customers couldn't see the black eye. Rife jokes, yeah, but I feel like if she could cook, she wouldn't have that black eye. It's just not funny because the whole thing about comedy is that it's meant to be surprising. Yeah. And it's meant to build tension. You know how Hannah Gadsby talks about that? Yeah. It neither builds tension nor offers a surprise. No. He's like, oh, she should be in the kitchen. She wasn't in the kitchen, so a man punched her. (laughs) What? What? That's not funny. It's not even a little bit funny. And it's just like I think he's trying to make a, a thing about Baltimore, but this is the thing about American They think we comics. understand Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. They think that everybody understands their references. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Exactly. They're like, I'm in Tennessee, and it's like that's just relatively meaningless to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. me being like, oh, look at me. I'm in Richmond in Victoria. Yeah. It's like, I don't. No, know what that means. Uh, relatively few people know what that yeah. means in terms of a global audience. <laughs> exactly. So make it more applicable. So it's not funny. It's not surprising. It's just weird to make a joke about domestic violence. And then, and then like, the audience laughs, although there are a lot of theories that there's a canned laughter mm. track mm. that it's not actually the audience laughing. Yeah. And he's like... Test in the water, seeing if y'all are going to be fun or not. Just wanted to see... That's a good sign. If we've got people laughing about domestic violence, like I know it's going to be a good show. And the whole thing was, right, that he was meant to appeal to a female audience. That was kind of the bulk of his audience and he kind of threw them to the wolves or betrayed them in the first five minutes of his comedy special. Yes. So on TikTok, like the way he has built an audience is it's all women. And he in interviews has said this stand-up special was for men. I wasn't going to pander to women because when I do stand up, women bring their partners. So it's relatively 50 50. Yeah. And I wanted this to speak mm. to men. And it's like, oh my God, it's so cool for you to joke about domestic violence because that really speaks to men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he starts with that. But then there are all these bits where it's like he's just ranting about something he is passionate about, but it's not, it's not going intellectual, right? surprising anything. Mm. So. He then goes on to rant about how all women are obsessed with astrology. And, okay, this is the other thing. It's it's like an internet cliche, but it's not actually true. It's like he's trying to be like a walking meme. Yes. And the thing is about comedy is that the thing that makes you laugh the hardest at something is when it's true. Mm. But it's like he's joking about stereotypes because it's like not all women are obsessed with astrology. Yeah. Like you're laughing at like an internet stereotype or like, an influencer you've seen. Yeah. So he starts talking about how they're all obsessed with astrology and they blame Mercury for how their lives are going. I've seen this clip on TikTok. And he's like, I'm so sick of hearing you women blame your poor life decisions on planets. And then he starts like full going into a lecture about... If I hear one more person blame how their life is going on Mercury, (laughs) I will kill you myself. Do you understand? (laughs) You leave that goddamn planet alone. I am so tired of you ladies blaming your poor decision-making skills on planets that don't even know you. Get this through your head. Astrology is not this magical life guideline that, that predetermines your future in the stars. No, none of that. Your future is dependent by your own thoughts, opinions, and actions. You are in complete control of how your future turns out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Say? Like, it's just, it's not particularly wise or insightful. But then, his joke is then... Yeah, just because Jupiter has a ring and you don't, doesn't mean... <laughs> doesn't mean that's who you're supposed to look up to for all this magical advice, man. You okay, this ring. is my... And I don't say this enough. I hate puns. <laughs> I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. 
that cleverness is for you. Yes. It's not for an audience. Okay, but. (gasps) (laughs) But it doesn't have a ring, does it? Well, people are mad because Saturn is the planet known for for having a ring. Mm. If you Google the planets, Mm -hmm. you will see photos of the planets and you will see Saturn. That's the one with the ring. Okay, Jupiter. Jupiter technically has rings, but they were discovered quite recently and they're not really visible to the naked (laughs) eye. But it's just not known for its rings. So this has gone viral on TikTok, Mm. people talking about why this is a bad joke. (laughs) And the thing is, if you Google which planets have rings, it's like Jupiter, Saturn. Okay, so you just Googled it. So he's Googled it, it, he's seen the first thing. Yeah. And he's inserted that into his joke. And nobody's thought to say, oh, actually wrong planet to choose. Should be Saturn. (laughs) It should be Saturn. Mm. Then he goes on a rant about how he loves old people. He's like, I hate young people. I hate young people. I love oh, old you're people. So and, cool. and he's like objectifying them. Mm. And he talks about having sex with an old person. You know, you can't, well, yeah, you can't choke them. You gotta like kink their oxygen. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> ah, not today. Not today. You're all right. You're fine. Walker it off. Stop all. it. Stay away from everyone. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's just not funny at all. No. The whole stand up special. I implore, like, all the comments. I've actually never, I'm on Matt Rife TikTok at the moment, and I've not seen one person be like, oh, actually, there was this one funny. I've not heard a single no. good word about that. No. Special. And so, all the comments, like, I went on YouTube, TikTok, everywhere that there's, like, any kind of clip or any trailer for this stand up special, mm. people are like, I didn't laugh once. Mm. That's amazing. It's actually amazing to not mm. even accidentally. No. I'll have a giggle in a TED talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'll have a giggle in like President Obama or like some great orator will like do a speech mm-hmm. and have a little giggle. Mm. Often it's even by accident. But to not make people laugh by accident no. is a skill. Yeah. And the thing is that where he is a little bit funny is he does like crowd interactions. Crowd work. So someone will... I saw some funny ones. Yeah. That's what I've seen before mm. and been like, eh. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. But because this is just straight stand-up, it is terrible. And people have also pointed out he puts on a, they call it a black scent, where it's like you put on a voice to sound like you're a black person when you're not a black person. And it's just not his real voice and he's using all these like ain't, like yeah, all yeah, these yeah, yeah. all these words and phrases that just do not well, seem natural. Well, apparently that's sort of where he got his start, right, was yeah. among other black comics. And then yep. he sort of played to a lot of audiences that were predominantly black and he was asked about that and it was like, oh, I don't want to be pigeonholed. Basically every time it's brought up that he has an audience that isn't white men, mm-hmm. he's like, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want up. this audience. Yeah, I would like to throw them out and find the white men. It's like what? Yeah, why? So here are some responses to his comedy special that I've seen. All his jokes are just status posts on Facebook he saw five years ago. Oh my god! <laughs> well done. Exactly. That's it. it. Exactly it. The rise and fall of Matt Reif needs to be studied. <laughs> Actually, well, yes, that's what we're doing right here. I would love to interview someone who was present at this recording because there yes. isn't any way they were all cracking up this loud. Jesse, moving on to his response to the backlash. So obviously everyone is like, sir, no, absolutely not. We see what you've put down <laughs> and we shan't be happy. We hate it. We would like to give it back. So he responds via an Instagram story. And he writes, if you've ever been offended by a joke I've told, here's a link to my official apology. And it's a link to a health website selling special needs helmets. That's not funny. It's so embarrassing. It is so, I was going to say year seven, but it's late year five. <laughs> it's year five. It's, it's very year five yeah. being like, I'm going to make fun of people with disabilities. Yeah. And he has in his Instagram bio a thing about how the internet takes itself too seriously. Like he's all about like everyone takes themselves too seriously. Dude, oh, it's really cringe that people are like telling you your stand-up isn't funny and you're actually getting quite mad about it. <laughs> to have the confidence of Matt Ryan. Like it's so embarrassing. Did he have his jaw done? Two weeks after Matt Reif released his terrible comedy special, 
and accused everyone who didn't find it funny of not being able to take a joke. A plastic surgeon called Dr. Benjamin Coughlin posted a video of himself frolicking around his clinic with the caption, me after creating the greatest jawline ever seen just for my patient to get cancelled right after. (gasps) I didn't know this. The video racked up tens of millions of views on Instagram and TikTok and it had the hashtags cancelled comedian stand up. Now, the internet is a place where people talk shit. (laughs) That's all anyone does. Everyone knows this. Yeah. But Matt Reif, have you seen pictures of Matt Reif and our team? He's got a new jaw. It's fine. He's He's got a new jaw. He's got Kylie Jenner. Yeah. Like when Kylie Jenner came out and everyone was like, oh, who's that? And she was like, I didn't change anything. I just grew older. And it's like, no, you took your face off. (laughs) You ordered a new one. You got to sign on. Yeah. Which is fine. But don't tell us that you didn't. Because you have a different face. That's confusing. And that's the same as Matt Rife. So Matt Rife has been interviewed a bunch of times because he has been in the public eye for so long. He's done stand-up for something like 15 years and he's 27. It doesn't make any sense. And he's been in the public eye for so long that there are images and videos and that sort of thing of him as a teenager. And his teeth are different, his face is different. He says all he has had done is veneers. Mm. But everyone's like, well, then why do you have different cheekbones, different lips, different jaw, all of that? Yeah. So this plastic surgeon is stirring shit. Troll, the best kind of troll. Like a fun troll. Like whatever, (laughs) whatever. One person commented, this is genius because everyone is going to decide it's Matt Reif, even if it isn't, (laughs) and the doctor legally can't (laughs) confirm or deny. (laughs) Now, I just love that we're (laughs) celebrating that and it's like, no, you should be a medical professional and why are you dancing around (laughs) your (laughs) offices? Trolling celebrities. (laughs) I know. It's like, don't you have surgery? It's like there are are doctors who are in their scrubs who make 45 TikTok videos a day and they're like, Here's the work that Jennifer Aniston had done. And it's like, do you not have clients? Yeah. And like, maybe do some pro bono <laughs> if you've got that time on your hands. But Rife saw the video on Instagram mm. and he commented, lying about medical history is illegal. Just FYI. He never said it was you, Matt. Don't bite. And everyone was like, <laughs> no. No, you're a comedian. This guy's making a yeah, joke. Yeah, he's. <laughs> where the doctor said nothing (laughs) was funnier than your whole special. Exactly. People responded, Matt Rife having his bio as stop taking the internet so seriously Mm. and then crying about this is so funny. (laughs) But the other thing is it's like lying about medical history is illegal. You know what else is illegal? Domestic (laughs) violence. (laughs) Well said. Well said. Embarrassing podcast interview. In June 2023... Matt Rife appeared on Tana Monjo's podcast. Jesse, do you know what her podcast is called? Cancelled. It's called Cancelled. We didn't know when we started this one. <laughs> and I was like, damn. Yeah, there's already one. Now, we don't know who came first. I haven't no, Googled they, it. I think she came first. Yeah. And every now and then people would be like, you stole that. And, and I'm like, like, no, no we, we just didn't check. We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Lazy girl. She's a lazy girl. And it's, it's American and it's different and she's really famous <laughs> we're not so it's fine yeah. there's not a lot of not competition right no come on our show no it's a very different content very different <laughs> now he says on her podcast come on that's the thing i don't really hate anybody i don't here's here's a very humbling experience that i've uh, sorry i guess epiphany that i've had recently that because so many fucking people hate me for really no reason Mm. and it really made me realize that like people only hate somebody they're jealous of when rife finishes speaking monjo savagely replies yeah that's your guy that was a really really good well-rounded answer i'm trying to wrap my head around do you think people who hate osama bin laden are jealous of him it is it's so so good and that's how most of us operate in our day-to-day lives is you're allowed to look at somebody and not like them because you disagree with what they're doing no, but morally. this is such a construct of like a man like Matt Rife. Mm-hmm. Mm, you don't like me. You are likely jealous of my <laughs> ha-has and my good looks. <laughs> Nobody laughing, mate. <laughs> Comment said, Tana is funnier in the last five seconds of this clip than the whole of Matt Rife's comedic career. Oh, Actually, I agree. hard agree. 
And Tana's response is funnier than anything Matt Rife has ever said. It's just I can understand trying to tell yourself that, that, that their hate has more to do with them than it does with you. Yeah. Like, that's the only way you get out of bed. I completely understand <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The very interesting thing is that Tana made this Osama bin Laden reference and then remember in November of this year TikTok had a day where all the young people decided Bin Laden was a freedom fighter? I've never heard Osama's perspective. Osama Bin Laden came with the receipts. It was really what? weird. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't remember it that. It was all to do with the war and everyone was like, Osama Bin Laden was misunderstood. It only oh went for God, a day. Oh, my God, that is so internet. It went, it went for a day and then everyone was like, you're too young, you missed it, you missed <laughs> you it. You missed the context. And you've, yeah, you've only opened the book in the last chapter oh. and you missed all that. Yeah. You, let's not overthink yeah. Osama Bin Laden. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Let's just... Not a good guy. Speaking, speaking of cancelled. <laughs> speaking of cancelled. He's been prosecuted. So it was just very embarrassing that he tried to say, everyone's jealous yeah. of me. Yeah. And even somebody who, I don't know if we'd consider Tana an intellectual, she was like, hmm, I don't know about that argument. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to challenge you, Matt Rife. I really liked it. An uncomfortable Zendaya moment. No one can In 2015, Zendaya appeared on the show Wild and Out. Yes. So this is a show he was on for years. Yes. And he was the only white guy. I yes. think he was on the show. Yes. Yeah. He was involved in a common skit on the show where the teams of comedians attempt to make the captain of the opposing side laugh so they spit their water out. So the idea is I take a sip of water, mm. you try and make me laugh. And I like I've watched clips of this. And he really struggles. <laughs> he really struggles. He it's like awesome. tries one thing and it kind of doesn't work and then he takes his shirt off, and I'm like, oh, that's so funny. Oh, it's so embarrassing. Some of the other guys are funny. Yeah, I bet. Now, the captain of the opposing team mm. in this instance was Zendaya. Mm. I mean, it's 2015, but she's still Zendaya. She's famous. She, like, everybody knows. Go on, Claire, drop it in. Drop it in. Go on. I interviewed Zendaya around that time. And what did you think of her? She had a beautiful face, but she was looking at her phone, mm. and I found it rude. <laughs> <laughs> I interviewed Zendaya and Zac Efron. Yeah. And Zac Efron had beautiful eye contact. Yeah. Zendaya was, she was younger. She was really young. It had been a really long day and you were overexcited and she was probably trying to relax. (laughs) So I've just, Did you make Zendaya laugh? I don't think so. (laughs) I don't think that I did. Okay. But she was very young. Mm. And Rife's attempt at making Zendaya laugh went a little bit too far even for the other comedians on stage. In the clip, Rife takes the stage and, oh, my God, it's just so embarrassing. He tries, so she's got this sip of water. One guy's tried to make her laugh. She didn't laugh. Still got the water in her mouth. He actually goes to make a joke and then halfway through he's like, no, 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 no. It's like, ah, it's embarrassing. Yeah, 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 a bort's joke. Then he says, Look, you're mixed. I want to be black. Let's make a lifestyle of it. It's not funny. It's, it's like not a, a weird joke. Pick up, kind of racist it's, pickup line. Yeah, it's yeah. a racist pickup line. She doesn't spit out the water because it's not funny. Then Rife grabs her face, grabs it while she's got water in her mouth, Do and not says, touch them down. "Spit that water out so I can get your number, please." It's not funny. It's weird. He's he's like that creep. <laughs> it just feels like I'm at a club, and I'm like 19, and some. Someone's bothering me. <laughs> Someone's <laughs> bothering me. They're standing too close. Mm-hmm. Their jeans are too low. Their teeth are too white. Mm-hmm. And they're wanting to buy a drink and then they're a hanger on. Yeah. The comedians on Zendaya's team immediately begin arguing with Matt Reif. Mm. Spit that water out so I can get your number. <laughs> Don't be touching on her like that. She too young. I didn't touch her. She can handle herself. Is it because he touched her? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're like, keep your hands off her. Yeah. Then afterwards there's been like all sorts of clips about this because mm. it's just so embarrassing. And one of the comedians who was also on the show admitted that Rife just bombed and he said that was definitely a bomb, not only a bomb for the audience but everybody on the cast was like, whoa, chill then. Oh, it's so like strange. it's just so, so embarrassing. But it's the fact that he makes a racist joke slash pickup line yeah. and then touches her. That everyone's like, this guy's the worst. Yes, yeah. Moving on to being too hot for comedy. 
Earlier this year, an interview with Men's Health went viral on TikTok with Matt Reif saying that being physically attractive wasn't helping his career. He said people don't want to laugh at physically attractive people. You don't want to walk on stage and have people looking at your arms rather than listening to your jokes. I think it just makes me work that much harder on the material and the jokes I'm trying oh, to shit. tell to get people to focus on the I'm saying, you know, you know the Hamilton thing that's like, I'm riding like I'm running out of time. Like that bit. It's yeah. like him and he's like riding and he's study and he's like domestic violence, <laughs> yeah, punch yeah. her in the face. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 uh, where do I go with this? Yeah. Um, Working so put hard. Put her in the kitchen. She can't cook. Oh. Oh. Like that's his kind of. Genius, genius. Genius Especially just coming out. helmets. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I just, I hold myself to a higher standard. Yeah. Some of the comments on this interview where he was basically like, people don't laugh at you if you're hot. Some of the comments. So brave, King, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Love the internet. (laughs) Matt, the question was, how are you today? (laughs) God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. (laughs) And thank you for being vulnerable. Lots of people were unsure about whether it was a bit. Because they're like, if that's a bit, that's genuinely really funny. If he is pretending, like, it's really hard for me to get on stage and be this I don't hot. think it's a bit because I saw other clips from other interviews where he tries to say the same thing. Yes. And to that, I would say, you could be ugly. Your appearance mm. that you're saying is holding you back is something you've worked very, very hard on. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. like, even his arms, like, he's wearing a really tight singlet with his arms out. He's got the veneers done. He's got all of that. Like... He's put all this work into being someone who's physically... He looks a certain way. He looks a certain way. And then he's like, it holds me back. Hmm? Yeah, it's like me saying wearing pantsuits really hold me back when I come to work in a pantsuit every day. It's like, well, why don't you wear a (laughs) moo-moo? Like, there are other options. It's like, it's fine. The trouble is he's made the point over and over again, so it's not a bit. In conversation with today, he reiterated his struggle. He said, I would say it's harder. And that was in response to a question about whether being good looking makes comedy more difficult. This is when someone who's really rich and really famous, you know how like there's a real currency of vulnerability? Mm. It's like, shit, 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 gotta share, gotta share, gotta share. Yeah. And he's like, I'm hot. Like, that's all I've got. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, I've got too much money. Mm. I'm really good looking. People don't take me seriously because I'm hot. Yeah. That's that's all I got. And everyone's like, can't relate. (laughs) Yeah. Cannot relate. Cannot relate. He said his comedy career is made more difficult because of the fact that this conversation is even happening. It's, it actually is so hard for white men in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's so hard. but the fact that I said it and I'm doing Men's Health magazine, which seemed like the perfect context to talk about the shape you're in, I would say it definitely doesn't help. Mm. And then the question was, why? <laughs> and he said, because people don't like you. People assume your life is easier when you have all these good things going for you. There's nothing funny about somebody living an easy life, or so you would assume. So that's why I would say it's a little bit harder. You have to win people over more often. No, no, no. That's not what the research says. The research says that ugly people. (laughs) It's harder. (laughs) It's harder on ugly people. Yeah. (laughs) And that, in fact, when they walk into a context, I don't know why I'm talking about them as though they are (laughs) another group apart from me, (laughs) but people who are not traditionally attractive actually have a really hard time. Yeah. People are really mean to them. And also you make fun of them. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. This is not a thing. And I feel like this is a way for his ego never to get Mm. damaged because he's like, okay, people don't like me. I don't think everyone doesn't like me for the same reason. Mm. There are people who don't like me. Group A, jealous because I'm really good. (laughs) Group B, I'm too hot. Yeah. That's that's it. They're the haters. (laughs) They be the haters. Here's a helmet. (laughs) Here's a helmet if you don't like me. Jesse, it's time for charges and sentences. My charge. It comes back to something we've revisited a few times and it's dismissing his base. Mmm. So he's on the record Mm. as saying his audience is primarily women. Yeah. But in this particular stand-up that has started all this controversy, he did it for men. Yeah. And it's like, why? Nobody wanted it. Mm. So my sentence. I was going to say the thing about him doing stand-up for 15 years and being 27, it's like, so you've never had a real job. 
Yeah. And you yeah, know yeah, that yeah, we yeah. love to sentence people yeah. to get a job, any job, get a real job. Yeah. But I thought, nah, actually, I want you to perform that set exclusively to women indefinitely. Women at universities, mothers' groups, yeah. domestic <laughs> violence advocacy groups. Yeah. And make it one of those stand up routines that's really two sided. So I want the audience to be heckling. Oh. Like the whole idea is like, hey, this guy's going to do stand up and we want you guys to respond to it. So he does the first joke and everyone goes, oh. And I want him to do it in like small environments with women mm. because the women will leave. They're yeah. busy. And then you're going to have an empty room. Yeah. yeah, and it's just cringe because that's the thing. He's doing that stand-up special in a theatre where people feel locked in mm. and they go, oh, I paid for a ticket and I drove here. I might here. be on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, I might be on Netflix. Yeah. I paid for parking. Mm. I've, I've committed a lot. Whereas if he comes into the Mum Mia office and he's like, hey, I'm going to do a stand-up special. Please. Absolutely. Please. Can't we go in the kitchen? I'll we'll, sit down we'll do at this like table. a lunchtime thing. Yeah, like yeah. a lunch and learn with Matt Reif. And he starts. You do your bit. And I go, actually, I want to eat my lunch outside today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll be leaving. I'll be moving on. And everyone just starts talking. Everyone starts talking and go, oh, sorry, is the, is the joke that, sorry, is the joke that she can't cook so she got a black eye? Oh, okay. Just want to confirm. <laughs> That's not funny. All right, cool, That's cool, not cool, funny. Cool, cool, cool. You know what? Most of the women in the Mummy office would say, "What? I've got some feedback. I have some feedback, which mm. I would like you to take on with yeah. openness and curiosity." Yeah. My feedback is, "You're not funny. You're not funny, and I hate it." Yeah. And we've called security, <laughs> and they're taking you out. Yeah. Keep performing. Yeah. Keep performing. No, I agree. to a female audience who are going to call you out. Yeah. And say, "Oh, no, don't no. like it." And and women who are busy, who have other yeah. places to be. Yep. And so we'll hold you accountable for wasting their time. I love it. Jesse, charge and sentence. All right. <clears throat> My initial charge that I thought was poor knowledge of the planets, which is one I haven't dished out before. And I stand by that. I do think he's charged with that, but I have mm. a bigger one. Mm -hmm. My charge is to do with something that you, I would say, didn't focus on enough probably okay. in your trial. Just some feedback for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it will be the paranormal investigating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I was going to go deeper. Yeah. And then I thought nothing will beat Demi Lovato <laughs> singing to a ghost. <laughs> but can you, people, if you haven't listened to that to episode, Demi Lovato can singing you to a ghost, go back and listen? Because it's one of my favourite things. What song does she sing? <laughs> like a, like uh, a skyscraper. <laughs> it's like, can ghosts not have peace? <laughs> and the answer is no, because I'm trying to ghost. And Matt Reif is in my house being like, hey, you got a ring like Jupiter? Uh, <laughs> it's Saturn. It's Saturn. Stop. Stop stand-upping in, in my, my haunted. In my haunted, okay? Yeah. So my charge is being a paranormal investigator yeah. okay. and how it's not fair that only white men seem to get to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So my sentence is I don't think the comedy thing's going great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually. Good I, go on. Hmm. Ghost Hunters need us a 24-hour host. I want you to go full-time ghost hunter. <laughs> okay. And what I want is when you go to those homes mm. and you have all your trinkets and you have your beep, 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 you're close to a ghost and their energy, mm. I want that ghost <laughs> to be a feminist. <laughs> okay. I want that and ghost. And for her to spook the fuck out of <laughs> that you. ghost. Fought for the right for women to get a vote. Mm -hmm. And then Matt Rife walks into her house and she goes, hell no. <laughs> get <laughs> off. Get off. Get, get out off. of it. Mm -hmm. And she is having none of it. So what is just scary shit? She, I want her to, to you, throw a, a you, ghost tantrum. A ghost tantrum yeah. where it's like, I'm going to fuck with your equipment. All the cupboards are going to open and the chair is going to fly across the room. Yeah. You I'm know, not in Paranormal around. Activity, there's a scene where, because it's always a subtlety that's good, and then there's a yeah. scene right at the end where the ghost runs towards the camera and I go too much. I didn't want to see the ghost head on. <laughs> yeah. This ghost runs towards him yeah. and it's too much. Yeah. It's actually too much. Actually just full drama. <laughs> like like fully is like, bleh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely yeah. loses it. The ghost breaks a fourth wall. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think she possesses him? Yeah. And it's like exorcist style, like vomiting, chained to the bed. Like, yeah. And Matt Rife's like, I know 
you think I'm joking because I'm a comedian, but yeah. I've been possessed by a first wave <laughs> ghost first and demon. she's hurting me from the inside. She's really bad. <laughs> yeah. And he could finally understand what it's like for other people who have things to worry about that aren't being hot. <laughs> exactly. That's all we've got time for on Cancelled. Cancelled is produced by Talissa Bazaz with audio editing by Tom Lyon and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.